As the name suggests, you can understand that there is an inflammation of the optic nerve. Inflammation of the optic nerve is nothing but optic neuritis and it is accompanied with a swelling that is disc edema of the optic nerve. Okay, that's the definition. Now, optic neuritis is broadly divided into two types. The first one is optic neuritis proper or papillitis that is seen in about 40% of the cases but 60% that is most of the cases are retrobulbar neuritis that is the part of the optic nerve present behind the eyeball gets inflamed hence the word retrobulbar okay. Now this is the inflammation of the optic nerve anteriorly close to the optic disc whereas it is present posteriorly retrobulbar neuritis away from the optic disc. So coming to optic neuritis, the most common cause of optic neuritis is multiple sclerosis. This can be asked as a question. So kindly remember in a young lady when you are looking at her fundus and you find that there is optic neuritis, immediately you have to suspect multiple sclerosis. So the inverse of this statement is that the most common ocular manifestation of multiple sclerosis is optic neuritis. Okay, do you understand? Optic neuritis occurs in multiple sclerosis and the most common ocular manifestation of multiple sclerosis is optic neuritis. Okay, so the immediate investigation that you will order to uh, rule out multiple sclerosis is an MRI. Okay. So what are the features with which the patient presents to you? The most important feature is a sudden painful loss of vision. There's a sudden painful loss of vision. Okay. Then the pain intensifies with ocular movement, particularly when the patient tries to look up or inwards, that is towards the medial side. So this type of movement increases the pain uh, in optic neuritis. Okay, so the superior rectus and medial rectus are the muscles which help us in our upward gaze and the inward gaze by contracting and because these muscles are located close to the optic nerve, close to the optic nerve, when they contract, the pain intensifies in optic neuritis. Okay, is this clear? Now, another striking feature is color desaturation. Now, what do I mean by this? You can understand from this image. All of us can look at these strawberries like this. See, bright red and bright green strawberries. However, a patient with optic neuritis looks at these like this. Strawberries appear as if they have faded. This is called color desaturation. That is a striking feature of optic neuritis. Okay. However, the hallmark of this disease is a disc edema. Okay. Well, so, when you are looking at the fundus of this patient, it appears something like this. See, normally the optic disc appears very well defined, you know, something like this. But here, see, you can hardly make out the margins. It is swollen to a very large extent and this is the hallmark of optic neuritis, okay. And another important exam related point as well as a classic feature of this disease is the RAPD, okay. The famous RAPD that is relative afferent pupillary defect also known as Marcus gun pupil. Okay, so we will understand what Marcus gun pupil is in a little while. However, when we try to look at retrobulbar neuritis, all that we have spoken until now is optic neuritis. So in retrobulbar neuritis, none of these signs are present. So it says, it is famously said that the patient sees nothing and the doctor sees nothing. Now what do I mean by this? Now we can understand that because of this pathology, obviously the patient's vision is deteriorated. So that explains patient sees nothing. Now what is this doctor sees nothing? He does not have optic neuritis, then what's the problem? It is because the inflammation of the optic nerve is present behind the eyeball and when I examine the fundus, I cannot find any positive signs related to optic neuritis. It appears to be normal. That is why it is said the doctor also sees nothing. Okay, this was once asked as a question. Okay, now whenever you think of the nerve, immediately you have to 
uh, understand that there is invariably a visual field defect and the visual field defect characteristic for optic neuritis is your central scotoma see there is a central dark patch where the patient cannot see anything this is the characteristic scotoma in optic neuritis however there is a similar sounding scotoma called the centrocecal scotoma if you can see in this visual field normally the blind spot is here it, this scotoma is involving the blind spot as well and hence it is called as centrocecal scotoma and where do you see this centrocecal scotoma it is seen in condition called toxic amblyopia okay amblyopia means loss of vision okay we know that amblyopia means loss of vision and by toxic i mean the loss of vision due to consumption of certain toxic substances such as tobacco and alcohol okay so it is also known as tobacco amblyopia or toxic amblyopia and you can see in this picture the optic disc is strikingly pale okay this is a characteristic feature of toxic amblyopia however the differentiating feature between optic neuritis and toxic amblyopia that this is a slow painless loss of vision as opposed to the sudden painless loss of vision in optic neuritis okay do you understand in op toxic amblyopia because of a long standing consumption of tobacco or alcohol there occurs a slow painless loss of vision along with pale atrophic discs okay now the management you can understand you have to stop the drugs or the toxic substances that are causing this problem along with an injection of hydroxycobalamin so injection hydroxycobalamin is the treatment for toxic amblyopia then what is the treatment for optic neuritis and retrobulbar neuritis the single drug you use is intravenous methylprednisolone please remember this the treatment of optic neuritis or retrobulbar neuritis is the same it's intravenous methylprednisolone now let's have a quick comparative study of optic neuritis or retrobulbar neuritis along with toxic amblyopia so we have seen that this condition is a painful loss of vision whereas toxic amblyopia is slow painless this is sudden painful that is slow painless now the most common cause we have seen is multiple sclerosis and here it is tobacco and on examination the striking difference is there is disc edema in this optic neuritis whereas toxic amblyopia has pale and atrophic discs okay and the scotoma we have just seen it is central scotoma in neuritis and toxic amblyopia has a centrocecal scotoma and the management is intravenous methylprednisolone in neuritis and injection hydroxycobalamin along with the withdrawal of the toxic substances in toxic amblyopia hello everyone this is dr sai suguna your mentor for ophthalmology at medico app now thanks for watching the video now we have put such videos all together in our ophthalmology app the trial version you can download from the link over here or in the description box below